My name's Colin Tipping and this is the White Room Chronicles. The yellow rose of Texas that I am going to see Nobody else could love her half as much as me Well half as much or twice as much it's all the same to me For the yellow rose of Texas is far too tough for me She clung so when we parted it nearly broke her heart It took three mile up the road to fling her from the cart She thought I was a hero to fight with Beauregard Choice took swore in marriage it wasn't very hard Music from long ago. I even built this banjo to look like an 1890s uh, dubs and silver bell. When I first started playing the banjo, about 1956, I couldn't, couldn't find anything at all apart from the Pete Seeger book and I spent ages listening to records. And you try to pick up what somebody's playing and the record gets to the end so you put it back. And then it goes through and you think, I've nearly got that bit. And I must have wrecked hundreds of records. In case you're wondering, which you probably aren't. <laughs> the old time style is they play with the backs of the nails, not uh, play like that. Which is good for playing for square dancers. So yeah. So I suppose I've been interested in this music since about 1953. There's a programme on the radio called As I Roved Out and it was all traditional music from all over the world and being of sort of Irish-American descent I really loved the Appalachian music so I decided I'd play that. All other fads were discarded. Right. Play the fiddle a bit, I think. The difficulty is getting all of the You're swamped with DVDs and tutorials and workshops and weekends and things now, but in the old days, the 1950s, you had to figure it all out for yourself. So every American musician that came up here, I used to try and pick their brains um, and one of them American player called Tom Paley who just died last year he must have dreaded coming up to the northeast because I was there to pick his brains but he was a hell of a player um, so I learned a lot he was good at introductions as well outrageous puns and everything I used to play in Cayley bands for a while, but some of them suggested that I stopped. It's not that I couldn't play the tunes, but when they were playing little delicate tunes like... I was sort of doing the American version. So they look at you, you get these hard looks when you start putting bits in, especially when you're going. So, no Cayley bands. Just old time 
dancers and I used to play for a group called Step This Way that do Appalachian clogging and I've even been recalled because they've run out of fiddle players they can't get a fiddle player in a few weeks time so I'm going to be like the US Cavalry <laughs> I'll write to the rescue served me time as a shipbuilding draftsman at Neptune Shipyard. Um, so I learned to draw ships, design ships, and I worked with the shipwrights, so I learned a lot there. How to lay them out and, and build them. Make sure you launch them in a straight line. Um, <laughs> then I did national service and took a guitar with me and uh, plumped around, took me I used to hitchhike up and down home with this guitar. By the time I'd done two years, it was decidedly the worth I wear. So I used to bring washing home, slacken the strings, stuff me washing inside the guitar. <laughs> Sounded awful, mate, but I uh, got round. So <clears throat> then after national service, I, I started. Previously to that, I went to the Newcastle Folk Song and Ballad Club, which was in the Barris Bridge Hotel, known as The Sink. And then Louis Killen discovered that I could play. She cajoled me into singing, so I used to do the odd floor spot there. Then when I finished National Service, Ronnie Duke said, Jack and Pete Elliott are starting a folk club at Berkeley. So I went there and um, met two friends of mine, Roger and Patsy Young, and we still play music together after all these years. And... Uh, we hadn't played for about 10 years or something together, but once we started, it was like one of these things you see on a television, a guy saying, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> so we just played, but we're not. And we're, we're Roger, we can sit and play instruments, and we just seem to know what each other are thinking. And uh, he invented this little cap wall, because normally you drill holes and put sliders on the side of it, and the cap wall holds the string down. <coughs> Put the string holes the cattle in places, bit lateral thinking, touch of genius. And uh, so after that, I decided uh, just to keep playing around folk clubs because in those days you didn't have to go around looking for gigs. There weren't that many players, but there were hundreds of folk clubs, and you could go out every night and play in a folk club. Um, so I just kept doing that till I. Uh, Eventually got sick and had a couple of years off. Then I, I started playing. I got a contract job. I was working in Ireland. And I went there, heard some music there, came back and uh, started playing again. And then I finished up. I thought, I'll, I'll give this up and I'll uh, give up being a shipbuilding draftsman and I'll become a musician. I used to make instruments and repair them. And... Uh, I used to get a lot of work from Newcastle schools officers repairing violins and then Mrs Thatcher decided that there wasn't any money in schools for arts so my workload <laughs> dried up. Thanks Maggie. <laughs> and then she closed all the shipyards or did she close them or was the other lot? Oh, I think she did but uh, they've all been closing shipyards you know Britain's maritime nation rule Britannia uh, no shipyards so I'll, I spent oh, about 10 years or something away from music and uh, I worked in Germany, Ireland, USA. I started playing again when I got to the States and I used to busk in Jackson Square and that, that was an education. Um, so I remember what, playing in about 90 degree heat going round Jackson Square and you each you're allowed about 20 minutes in each of the spots so you can go around busking. And I was busked, this American guy was playing the guitar and he said, uh, can you, hey Limey, can you play that fiddle? And I said, well, I'll give it a go. So I played, we played right round all the square for about three quarters of an hour. We got back, all these mates were there and it was boiling hot and they were sitting down they had these bottles of white clear liquid and they were drinking this and I thought, 
and he says, do you want a drink? And they were all swigging the way at it, and I thought, oh, a drink of water, thank God, and I boil it. I had two bleak glugs of this in me, so I had to, I had just about exploded. It was homemade whiskey, you know, white lightning. God, I couldn't speak for days. Oh, and then I, I played another lot. And there was two guys playing guitar and a mandolin playing. I said, where are you guys from? And they said, not far from you by the sound of it. And they were from Lancashire. And this, this four-piece band didn't have a single American in it. <laughs> These people taking photographs of this American band. And they were all from the north of England. So I decided that one time I spent a year and a half working as a musician. And there was one week, one period of time I was up in Edinburgh for the uh, Fringe Festival that I did with the Hotham Hotshots. I went to Edinburgh Festival and then I went down to the British Country Music Festival in Worthing, annual thing down there. And I played on there two years running. And I was coming back, I finished, and I went to Hastings Folk Club the next night. And then when I came out it was about 11 o'clock and I thought, oh, I'll just drive home rather than going to this B&B and I got home at about six o'clock in the morning and I'd played non-stop for days and travelled up and down motorways <laughs> and Jeannie says, there's a guy being on the phone, he wants you to go and play in Leeds and I says, tell him I'm playing gigs further down the country, I can't do it <laughs> and I didn't answer the phone for three days in case it was somebody with a gig and I thought, I thought the pot with that, I like playing but I'm not going to be a trail up and down motorways with a, a hold all in because I used to take a fiddle banjo and guitar and an auto harp as well I was like a Sherpa <laughs> and, I, was, and I, I decided to give it up so then I had a, a few years off with Open University and then I did like an M8 Sunderland Maritime History and then somebody said to me come down to Gainsborough 2003 there was an old time music festival on and I went down and the place was absolutely packed out with old time fiddle and banjo players and I thought where the hell were you when I needed you? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly they seemed to have mushroomed and uh, so I'm still playing with that lot now. I wrote out what I was going to do. I've lost the piece of paper. Tune the fiddle so you get a lot of unison notes. Yeah. And the first instrument I had, a guy gave me a mandolin in 19, 1957, and I went and got some strings and a tutor, and I started to plink away at home. And my dad says, What you got there? I says, Oh, it's a mandolin. Well, let's have a look. And I says to him, You play it with this, plec with this plectrum. And he said, ah, oh, right, and he had the mandolin. He says, and you, you straight across both strings and you play it with a plectrum. Oh, I see, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, re he retuned it. And I said to him, you can't retune a mandolin. He says, of course you can. He says, your grandfather and great-grandfather, who were... Uh, sort of emigrated to America and my great-grandfather was born and my grandfather. He says they played the fiddle. They used to retune the fiddles all the time. And I thought, well, because that's a sort of American thing. They do that a lot. And I thought, blow me, I never knew that. And I thought, that well, that was a very a valuable lesson. Because when you start off with music, you think, 
Oh, I know, I'm dead keen on it. I know all about it. These old folks know nothing. Uh, and it was a sort of great lesson in humility that however keen you are, you know, somebody standing next to you who just sit and watch it might, might be an absolutely whiz player <laughs> and say nothing. So don't sort of give lectures. And Have you heard many a story told by old and young with joy About the many days of daring that were done by the Johnson boys Up, up, pretty girl, don't be afraid 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 Johnson boys and boys of honour, they knew how to call and made, they knew how to hug and kiss. Up, up, pretty girl, don't be afraid. 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 Thank you.